Street News to discuss Ohio politics and beyond. I hope to see you there. Hello, and welcome to Mean Street News. Mean Street News is here to provide accurate news to help citizens affect change in their local government and beyond. Being nice is overrated. It is time to be real. I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. The time to step up and step in is now. So please come join me, Katie, over on Mean Street News to discuss Ohio politics and beyond. I hope to see you there. Hello, and welcome to Mean Street News. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mean Street News. Again, Katie, if you're new, welcome. Um, if you're returning, thank you. I appreciate the support. Do you wear my glasses? Because I have a lot of reading to do, and I don't want to be looking like this. You know what I mean? So I decided today I was going to wear my glasses. Um, I think I fixed my mic setting. It was off a little bit, and I think it's because I had the wrong setting. It's a new mic, so I just have to get used to it. But hopefully I don't have the cracking that I did um, the last episode. If you listen on the uh, podcast platforms, I don't, um, it won't, I won't have that. Oh, I gotta flip my glasses up so I'm gonna glare. Um, today, since it's a Saturday morning, um, I want to talk about another character in this story. I haven't really brought him up too much because he did not join the board until uh, 2023. Um, he won his election by 136 votes. That is, um, yeah, that's very, a very, very close margin. So his election was very... Uh, very uh, contentious. Um, he ran on transparency, but I don't want to tell you too much about him. I want to, uh, in a little bit, discuss uh, that further. But real quick, last night I posted a video on Facebook of a uh, county um, ministry of assistant, John Gall and uh, Lorraine County Recorder Mike Duran, um, previously named Mike Fetterman, uh, and their altercation back in December of 2023. Um, we're going to go over that a little further, but I wanted to post that to show you guys um, just an example of retaliatory behavior um, from Mich Commissioner Hung's associates. Um, towards other, you know, and even in the same party, um, political appointments. The, the radio investigation was quite contentious at that time. And, um, yeah, so Commissioner, and we'll start where I started off. Commissioner um, Jeff Riddell won his election in November of 2022. Um, by 136 votes after winning he asked the board and I'm gonna play that video shortly if he could um, be a part of the executive session so there would be a smooth transition also because I think there was a uh, worry about what was being actually being discussed in those uh, executive sessions so we're gonna play that clip real quick and then we're going I'm gonna show you you know really what they um, what his first day in, day in office looked like, which is kind of crazy. And uh, uh, Commissioner Moore's statements as well uh, that day. And why it was so contentious and crazy. So let's watch this first. Good morning, Commissioners. And I, I just want to thank everybody. I started yesterday. I visited the building, trying to get used to the, uh, the lay of the land in the hallways and, uh, and talked to a few people and uh, was very appreciative of the, of the opportunity as well as the reception. Uh, 
Commissioner Lundy had, had offered that we would have a smooth transition, and I appreciate that. Uh, I want to work towards that end, and so I want to make myself available not only for the meetings here, but for the executive sessions that, that follow those so that I can get up to speed as soon as possible on the issues that are going so that, you know, we don't have to wait for, some, for me to get caught up. Uh, my understanding is that if the commissioners vote, uh, you know, if I have two votes that I can join that meeting as well as any other vendor or any other presenter. So I, and I will tell you, I, I promise to respect the uh, sanctity and the privacy of the executive session. So uh, with that, I look forward to joining you and hoping that you can help me get up to speed so that we don't have to uh, hit a wall on January the 1st. Thank you. That was the only public comment. Um, so we can move on to uh, So he asked, you know, since I have been elected, you know, um, commissioner of Lorain County, I want to, you know, join, I want to be a part of these, uh, executive session so I don't have to skip a beat coming into office and you can clearly see uh, that was uh, request was just ignored they didn't even respond um, so clearly uh, Lundy and, and Hung didn't want uh, uh, elected the elected uh, commissioner coming in before the uh, organizational meeting and they can invite anybody into a uh, executive session so I just found that really um telling um so i gotta stop saying um why am i bringing this up because this guy was elected to office and his first day was being you know attacked basically told that he you know isn't isn't uh gonna support the safety forces because of this contract and you know how horrible he was and um we're going to give you a little bit of an example and then i'm going to play what he said his first day of um actually no i'm not going to give you that we're going to play what we're going to play what commissioner riddell and moore said the day that they rescinded the six point um i think it was 7.7 .7 at the time yeah 7.7 .7 million dollar contract to cleveland Communications Inc. on December 21st of 2022. Um, it was a special meeting because it wasn't regularly scheduled. Um, they scheduled this meeting at the beginning of December. Uh, they passed the RFP for um, accepting the bid from CCI in October of 2021, but they waited until the last day in power in a special meeting to pass the contract all knowing all of them knew that that contract was going to be rescinded uh, a little over two weeks later um, by the new board of commissioners the Lorraine County prosecutor passed that uh, 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 approved that RFP that CCI um, submitted on December 19th two days before they went in and passed a multi-million dollar contract the last day uh, Michelle and uh, Matt Lundy were in power and I and I think that is very very telling of their behavior of the behavior that had gone on uh, 18 months uh, previous with Commissioner Moore I think it shows their character um, it shows the drive that they wanted to get this through and it shows that they did it so so crazy because and, and it really doesn't understand I really don't understand why they did it like that because they could have passed this contract in October November um, I think they waited because it was a lot it was election um, season it was right before November when the RFP was um, approved they say because they were waiting on the prosecutor's office i could see that also but um i don't think it was really appropriate to wait to the last hour to pass a multi-million dollar contract that was being questioned by the new um electorate and uh 
way before a new board came in to uh, take control. So what we're going to do is we are going to share my screen. Oh, hold on. Oh no. Oh, I gotta open this. Just give me two seconds. I had them all saved. Here we go. And okay, so here we go. So he is newly elected. He ran on transparency. We're going to see what he said before he was elected here shortly. We're going to go through his interview because I found it fascinating. But the first thing we are going to do is see how his first day in office came. Now, this is his response after all of the safety forces, the usual suspects came up and basically just, you know, you're horrible when something happens and blah, blah, blah. All these safety forces people, though, I want to be very, very clear here, all of, every single um one of the safety force safety force people and people that spoke knew prior to this meeting that that contract was going to be rescinded they knew when they passed the contract that it was going to be rescinded um they made their their statements very clear the new board coming on that you know we were going to take a double look at um this contract and see if it's really for the in the best interest of the Lorraine county taxpayers um because there were questions about how um, Michelle and Harry went about um, getting it passed. So give me two seconds, I'm gonna share my screen. A, a couple of statements. Number one, my name is Riddell. Rod, Rod, Bobby Rydell was a singer, although most of you are probably too too young to remember him. But uh, my name is Riddell, so I'd appreciate that. Secondly, I appreciate those who came in today and did not impugn my character by trying to make it appear that I am not concerned about the safety of the law enforcement or the fire or any other safety forces. That's absolutely not true. Just because we have a differencing, difference of opinion does not mean that my difference is based on safety. I've been very clear from the beginning and to the individual who spoke to my manning up and, and keeping my integrity, I campaigned last year on the very concept that this contract was not done. Its first 18 months of life were a no-bid contract that should not be allowed by anyone, including those in this room, of their tax money. It was then ruled that it would go out to bid. It went out to bid. Then the bid constraint came back that the or two of the vendors needed a little extra time because they did not have the advantage of the relationship with Mission Critical. That, that, that additional time was denied and 15 days was allowed so the other parties had that uh, they, they gave us the courtesy of a no bid to show us that they couldn't bid. It was not on technical reasons, it was on time. And the commissioners at that time declared that there was an emergency. They needed to do only 15 days. So I want to be... Um... So I want to be clear here, you know, when he says it has an emergency, when when uh, Motorola Marks, same, they were on behalf of Marks, went and said, you know, we have questions about this um, RFP, 
uh, we would like more time to, you know, um, look at it. Motorola was told pretty much, um, you know, CCI came in and did the same thing. And then Motorola was told, you know, 14 days because of an emergency um, that they need, they were in such a rush. But then when CCI um, it got the bid in October and submitted the bid and, you know, uh, Motorola sent their no letter and which we'll go over t uh, tomorrow. And Vasu sent in, um, nobody talks about Vasu, but Vasu sent in their, their radio bid, partial bid. Um, that RFP that was accepted was then held till December 19th. And then they waited to the last day in office to pass, to, to, pa to accept the contract, to award the contract officially. Um, that's what he's, he's talking about. He's in, in a note, in the note contract was what we talked about yesterday, that June, that June 14th meeting. I just had to interrupt there. I asked this question. If in August, it was an emergency and we could only allow 15 days. Why was it not on the commissioner's docket until December 21st? And to those who like to argue about the details to try and, and cloud the conversation, it was a special meeting. It was not scheduled to happen until early December. It was a special meeting to clear the board and do some things, including this contract. So, with those facts, I would, like to, I would like to remind you that we are here to represent everyone in Lorain County. We are all for, I am, an intercommunicative system of, 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 of radios or whatever it takes, towers, so that all our forces in the case of man-made or natural event can communicate with each other safely. Number two, I don't have a dog in the hunt as far as brands or whatever. I only know Motorola because our company used to use Motorola radios. That's all I know about Motorola. I was honest with the chiefs that met with me in what I had not complete reading on certain facts because my position is not based on the brand or the technical information included. I know that we, I will eventually need to be up to speed on that but this issue is not about that. In our motion today, the reason I support it, I'm not exactly sure why anybody else would, but I supported it because we, we campaigned on it last year. It was a bad deal. There are questions. It is being investigated. And if we terminate it now, we can terminate it without undue cost to either the vendor or the county. And the threat of lawsuit, anybody can sue anybody any day. So I, I, I fail to understand there are times we're going to do the right thing and we're going to get sued anyway and we're going to have to defend ourselves, but I am committed to doing what I believe is the right thing to do. And I don't have all the information on the technical issues of the equipment, but I have a wealth of experience in contracts and bidding and this one is not right. To those who say we have to do it because lives are at stake tomorrow, I get it. But don't think that means I'm not concerned about public safety. But if this thing is important enough to spend four years on from 19 till now, actually about three, we, are, we still are in January of 23, then another couple of months to make sure we do it right and spend the taxpayers' money well should not be that big an issue. And the implication that we're not safe going forward means we're not safe today. I don't believe that. I believe we could be better, we could operate better, but I don't see everybody dying because of where we're at today. Now, I remind everyone in the room my perspective. Easy, 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 easy. I didn't interrupt anybody. I did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah. 
those people booing in the background those people booing in the background are 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 are, are deputies are chiefs of fire uh, a chief of police i believe i think only one um you know and that's how they're treating their 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 representatives you know they say to have you know respect for law enforcement and they are showing such disrespect to a person who is newly elected and this is his first day this is his first day and he's having to defend uh the behavior the bad behavior of the previous two commissioners lundy and uh michelle hung i mean bullying him that's i mean the level of immaturity and that and the level of disrespect for 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 someone that is giving their time to to hold office and has been pretty upfront with everybody about where they stand and it gets worse over the next two years it gets a lot worse and that's what, you know, the Chronicle doesn't report. They don't report, you know, the crowd booing. They don't report the nasty comments. They report the narrative and the picture that they want to for the public. It's very disappointing. Yeah. Lastly... When it comes to my when it comes to my objectivity and to my integrity, I met with everyone who called. I was here at the meeting on the 21st because I knew that this would be an issue. I was approached by the president of the sheriff's deputies who said he's going to call me to go for a ride along. I said, I'll be there. The call never came. I did. I talked. I talked to him on Sunday. I attended four commissioner meetings prior to the 21st. I didn't ask how many you attended. I asked how many you raised this issue. You can't end on it. So you had to go for a long time because you campaigned. Oh, he just said it. You campaigned on it. So he did campaign on it. He did campaign on this radio contract and the lack of transparency and the issues that he had. So the safety forces are now ad are just admitting that. They knew he was going to be rescinding this contract when they passed it two weeks prior to this meeting. And the yelling at him, he, you know, he's just walking into this situation. I mean, I know that he can't be on it, but he even says, I don't know the technicalities of, of this system. I'm going to be learning this. I am learning this. You know, give me some time. Why not look into this and make sure everything's above board? Because clearly there are questions. I did not. Thank you. But we need to be clear, have a little bit of perspective. The, the ARPA money is not monopoly money. It is our money, including everyone in this room. And it's money that we're spending that we've not yet paid. And I take it seriously that this $8 million represents the income taxes of the future of over 2,000 Lorraine residents. And it deserves to be spent well. And that's all there is to it. It's not six and a half million. We've heard seven, seven point nine million, seven point eight million. Let's negotiate. That's not how you spend public money. And that is my issue. Public safety, I am, I am committed to having an interface between every, every first responder in this county. But we're going to have to do it the right way.
the 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 clapping because you yelled and he said that he didn't speak publicly at a meeting but he attended meetings and he campaigned on the fact that he was going to be running against this contract because it's been questionable for the last two years and if you read county of the county sheriff's report nothing happened between 21 and 22 regarding the radios so there's a huge lie there there's a you know fallacy in that report there's an error um yeah so they come in buried them boo them and this can't feel good your first day on the job you know you're coming in thinking like maybe you're going to be a mediator here between you know what's been going on the last two years maybe a voice of reason and they don't even give you the opportunity because you know you're sending the contract less than a little over two weeks after they pass it on the last day in office that they possibly could pass it as like this power move and I think they did it so they could just honestly then start you know the 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 politicking and the the issues and the, and honestly I call them chaos crowd coordinators that's because that's what they are they just cause chaos to stir up emotion stir up drama in all actuality n none no one knows what they're even talking about they're following a narrative that's being painted for them by people that needed to get paid for this contract and you know what's so funny is the bid started at 6.4 no big contract right and dana golner made a statement that says you know you can't pay me my six hundred thousand dollar fee well then just up the up the up the um amount and <laughs> what did what did michelle and wendy do so it jumped from a $6.4 million bid to a 7.7 .7 in 18 months. Is that because everybody needed to get paid? Like Dana Golner said to the state auditor? Because everybody needed to, you know, line their pockets? By the way, I found in a Morning Journal article yesterday, and just because I'm bringing up the, you know, um, investigation, in April and June, how he said yesterday, those are so important, how Harry's hooked. Well, Michelle effed him too, because guess what she said? We started to ignore Commissioner David Moore after things got and, and things got contentious in April and June of 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 21 things just started falling apart well is that after she asked them for a 6.4 no bid contract for her friend and company Cleveland communications and Dave Moore walked out of the meeting and said no this isn't gonna happen and then you oust him and open the Democrat in order to get this contract passed and then you spend the next 18 months fighting it the next 18 months causing issues with dave ousting your your republican counterpart betraying your your republican voters who voted you in your constituents going back on everything that you said that you would do i mean it's not even appropriate for her to be acting in this manner and we'll go over that here shortly but this is her lobbying for a one one section of an one section of people you know safety forces out of the entire county of things that needed to be done she spent all she did for the entire time that she in office was bitch about radios that we've never in the history of Lorraine County paid for so let's go over what Dave Moore said that day and then we're gonna you know get to know since I, you know, we already got to know more, we're going to get to know Commissioner um, Jeff Riddell a little bit today. You need to know him before we go further because of, you know, what goes on the next two years while he's county commissioner to currently to today. And it's early and I don't want to blow up your brain with um, a bunch of info. I think that's like better to do to you, you know, maybe tomorrow in the evening um, when I come back on and we go over the second half of the sheriff's report um, this today is gonna be just as salacious but you know it's Saturday morning let's like woosa into this and um, I really think it's good to you know get to know the people that I'm going to be talking about that were were center stage um, in this I haven't played you know the safety forces guys yet or Aiden yet or 
um, you know, Michelle yet because honestly, it's just the same repetitive nonsense. We will be looking at little clips from them, but I don't really want to give them the spotlight to spew lies at you any more than I actually have to. Now, am I going to be posting those videos because they're relevant to the investigation and I have uh, integrity? Yes, but I'm not going to give them um, a, I'm going to give them as little much as little light as possible here because I don't think they um, I don't want to perpetuate their bullshit to be honest with you. So let's see uh, take a look at what Dave says. Um, this is Jan this is the first day of the new board organizational meeting January 9th um, 2023 um, and this is going to be Dave after speaking after Jeff. Give me two seconds let me share my screen. All right, we're going to Dave. All right, Dave, here we go. That is, is pretty similar to what happened in March of 01. Pretty much the room was filled this much back in March of 01 when I exposed the Justice Center when it bloated out to $80 million. We did a reset. Everybody thought they were going to die. Judges in here accusing me of their safety because they were in the old Justice Center. I was being vilified like I am today. And guess what? We came in on time, on budget. We did a reset. Will you, excuse me, sir. I'm speaking. We did a reset, and we got it in on time, on budget. But guess what? Some people went to jail over it, over the process. Now, we're, just, we're doing a reset on $8 million today. Now, that's what part of the reset's going to be. So there's a lot of elected officials in here that are also calling me up going, how much is this going to cost our communities if you guys move forward on this radio? Because a lot of letters were sent out after the vote asking people, asking their communities to say, we need you to support this. What's it going to cost us? Okay, there was not a lot of opportunity for those officials to get buy-in. Now, that buy-in's happening now. Okay, so this, what happened, well, I'm going to go back to just what happened on March 15th. There's some, there's some, Meetings, I know they're not on. Take a look at that meeting where I exposed the actual ORC violations. Take a look at the March 15th, 2022 meeting. That's very key for what happened here today. On March 15th, we were talking about approving a budget to, per to uh, hire mission critical to help us out with the RFP request. Take a look of work. They bring an independent and objective perspective to every engagement, and that's a priority for them. Okay, that sounds good. They also stated vendor, they stated that there were vendor neutrality is a value that underpins every aspect that they do. That sounds even better. Okay. They claim to be free of bias or favoritism to any specific product or service provider. Okay, I thought, okay. This is sounding good. This is what their cover letter said on a 10-page scope of work. And inside that scope of work that we were going to vote on on March 15th, it mentioned, it didn't mention Harris, it, well, it might have mentioned Harris and Motorola maybe once or twice. But it mentioned a vendor 26 times. A vendor, I asked the county, I, I sat there and said, I have a problem with this. I'm just recapping. And at the time, Commissioner Lundy said, we don't do anything unless we run it by the prosecutor, in which the prosecutor said, I have not seen this contract. That's what happened on March 15th. You know, we're just doing a reset. It's $8 million, folks. I see there's people here from the city of uh, Lorraine, elected officials, city of Elyria. I'm going to call them up and ask them, how much do you want to help us out? You know? I'd like to participate, but that's it. And the discussion.
No, he didn't ask him to come up. He he said, I haven't heard from any elected officials. And this is what Dave means by that. And later, this will be actually proven. In, in December of 2023, Jeff Armbruster, um, the new newly hired in um, March, I want to say, don't quote me on that. But newly hired county administrator will go on to say that, you know, how these MOUs have been done has been um, inappropriate, is somewhat inappropriate. The fire chiefs should not be, um, they should be not be in front of the board of commissioners. What they should be doing is they should be in front of their city councils and men discussing with their mayors their, their needs. Then their mayors and their city council men should be advocating for them at the since ultimately the decision for radios is the city's responsibility. And now I'm going to play you a quick video what I mean between radios and broadband telecommunications that I found a little helpful because I know that gets confusing when I keep saying like we're not here to purchase radios and Cleveland Communications doesn't have a broad uh, band telecommunications system like a tower. They don't build towers. They put um, equipment on uh, the county's tower on different cities' towers, um, in order for their their equipment to to work. And what would we end up being doing with these contracts instead of building the county's infrastructure and building um, uh, broadband telecommunication towers? We were going to be um, purchasing radios, radios, not anything to broad radios from tele, uh, CCI and allowing them and paying them a service fee to use their broadband to to connect radio save your cell phone connecting you know what I mean for their for their area however and this is the the thing we would forever be paying a service charge to a private vendor and 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 creating money and giving them money to build their infrastructure privately a private company and a private company having access to your your data um and a private company that doesn't hold an fcc licensure they they sublet that from the city of avon um they don't have their own towers they they are not they wouldn't be giving a return on investment to the Lorraine County taxpayers at all they'd actually be bleeding the Lorraine County taxpayers dry which they're doing and whether people will say this in a in a news statement it's going to cost the municipalities more yeah because you guys went ahead and 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 assigned a contract with Cleveland Communications when you could have gone through the county for a lot less that was your decision and your mayors and council people. That's not the board of commissioners. So let me play you this video um, real quick about what I mean by towers versus radios. In the summer of 2017, two devastating hurricanes hit Texas and Florida. Rescue and recovery teams continued to communicate and operate even in the midst of high winds, flooding, and power outages. which can be located for better coverage, easier access, or stronger security. With fewer sites, it is easier to prepare the network for a disaster, installing generators and storing fuel. And in the midst of a disaster, fewer resources are needed to perform repairs and deliver supplies, so personnel can focus on response and rescue. Land mobile radio networks are resilient. If a segment becomes disconnected from the network, it continues to operate and users can still communicate. And even if no infrastructure is available, 
radios can talk to each other directly using their high power transmitters. This is especially valuable in remote locations or when coverage is difficult. Like the network, the device in your hand needs to suit the conditions you work in. Radios keep you connected even when you face environments with zero visibility, need a battery that lasts a full 12 hours, or wear protective equipment or heavy gloves. Whatever your environment, your radio is designed to let you focus on your work, knowing that help is just a button press away. Every day, field personnel rely on mission-critical land mobile radio to stay in touch, keeping our communities safe and thriving. With unmatched power, proven resilience, and purpose-built devices, LMR is the core of Mission Critical Voice Network. Okay, so look at this graphic. Look what they're showing you. They're showing you a tower, right? Towers. And then they're showing you a device. So these two things are separate, right? What we're going to be doing in the contract that was actually passed in December of 23, um, a new contract, this is what this is what we'll be building. We're not we're the county the cities can pick whatever radios that they that they want. If they want an L3 Harris, if they want a Motorola, if they want a Kenmark, if they want they can use whatever radio. What the county's worried about is this right here. To be able to have connectability in the rural areas, which I hear rumors that there's issues with um you know that being a possibility with uh, CCI since they they I don't think they're really infrastructure out there um and don't quote me on that but that's what I've heard from people uh you know it was never about radios the county and that's why I say it was a misappropriation of ARPA dollars because if you really if you really think about ARPA dollars, they're supposed to be used for broadband telecommunication system. MARCS is a broadband telecommunication system. Radios are a tool that you use on the system. Radios have never in the history of Lorain County for the thousandth time been purchased by Lorain County, except for the Sheriff's Office. The municipalities have forever been responsible for their own purchase of radios. That's why this contract was suspect. That's why this contract was being questioned. I have two more quick videos to show you and then we're gonna get to Jeff's interviews. Oh, no. This one real quick. I wanna show you, Mark's tower goes live. We were out today at the ribbon cutting, for lack of a better phrase, is one of four towers now in Wayne County. We're here at the New Pittsburgh Tower, and we would like you to go ahead and light that tower. I just hit the button. All right, he just hit the button. So the site is now wide trucking. It's wide and on the air. Site 62, New Pittsburgh, is on the air. Site 62, New Pittsburgh, is now on the air. Hey, right. thank you very much. Increased coverage to the western portion of not only Wayne County, but also so the eastern portion of Ashton County. We're very excited about the increased radio of the partnership that we've created with the Marks radio system. Uh, it's been phenomenal over the past uh, about six months now that we've been using it. Could not be more pleased with the coverage that we received.
why am I to mute myself? Sorry. So I wanted to show you that little clip because look at what, when they say marks, they're talking about towers. They're not talking about radios, they're talking about towers. So when they keep saying radio system, they're saying radio system, they're talking about radios. It's the only thing that we purchase. We'd be purchasing radios and we would be paying CCI service fee to use their equipment that's on our towers that, you know, we pay for. And that's another thing about the towers is Michelle, you know, is charging CCI 1500 a month for our Burns Road Tower, but she tried to charge Dick Miller of, of Mark's $5,000 a month for the same lease agreement, which it didn't happen. But why would you charge an, a competitor, you know, $3,500 more a month for the same kind of equi like leasing spot? because you're trying to get rid of that competition because you want to give the second spot to Cleveland Communications who said they needed both spots on that tower in order for their system to operate fully back in 2020. I don't know. I don't know. But I really want um, people to get to know Jeff. I want you first to... Um, we're going to play a video uh, from one of our favorite people, Mr... Uh, Eden Fogel, um, one of his attacks against Commissioner Riddell. And let's see this call. And just, I just want to give this as an, as just an example of what, um, he put up with before we listened to what he said before he got elected about what he wanted to do and his purpose here. So let's listen to, uh, like I said, I usually don't want to give these people a platform, but I want to give you the public an example of the type of uh, vitriol comments that and personal attacks um, from friends of Michelle Hung. Now, Aiden Fogel, I got to, I, I reached out to him originally. Um, I wanted to know, you know, kind of what he was doing. So we have mutual friends. Like I said, I've known Aiden Fogel is for over probably 20. I've known him. I know I've never been friends with him because I don't associate with. Um, yeah, no. So I was questioning why Aiden Fogel, of all people, is up at the commissioner's office, you know, advocating for Michelle Hung. Um, he says in this little in this little clip, he'll he'll say. You know, I wrote this myself because he told me while on the phone one day that, you know, Harry and uh, Michelle edit his speeches and, you know, kind of, you know, tell him, you know, his parameters of where he needs to go. Um, when I went to the commissioner's meeting and I and I told her that I knew this, I knew this firsthand from Aiden's mouth, um, his speeches weren't, weren't so weren't still put together after that so i think uh uh you know i think she stopped doing that for a little bit but let's uh give you an example and then let's get to know who uh jeff riddell is truly and not what you know the dumpster fires report come on oh there we go okay Window. Okay, I'll show you share all right, show the entire screen. Okay. I'm gonna mute myself. Aiden Fogel, Sheffield Lake. So by my own independent research through public record requests without the benefit of assistance from anyone else, I believe that I have discovered the reason that Jeff Riddell rescinded the CCI radio contract. This is about, no, no, no. I, I, this, this is not on the agenda. This, this is not on the agenda. Items. It's not on the agenda. Okay. You're going to censor my words? You can come back next this week and do your usual my, campaigning for Michelle. But about, right now, it's about the jail. Okay, will you let me finish? I am. Go ahead. Okay. And why he is giving the Lorraine County Sheriff so much grief over budget items, number 13 on the agenda. 
<clears throat> it is because Jeff Fidel thinks that the cops try to screw him every time. As evidenced in the following Lorain County Sheriff's Department narrative 20010-3724 that I'm going to share in part today due to time constraints. While on patrol, this deputy observed the silver Ford SUV vehicle turn southbound on State Route 57 off of State Route 254. The vehicle was further observed to travel over the center line of the roadway on several occasions, nearly striking several other vehicles, also traveling southbound on State Route 57. The vehicle was stopped and personal contact was made with the operator, Jeffrey F. Riddell. Note, at first contact, Mr. Riddell, <clears throat> at first contact, Mr. Riddell was on his sailor telephone and, ad and advised his deputy that he was contacting his attorney. If Mr. you're not going to talk did, about the agenda, you can stop campaigning for Michelle right now. This is it's no, it's, it's not about sure it Aiden. You've sure been campaigning is. for Michelle oh, for not, all this year. This has nothing to do with Michelle. It huh? does. This you, ha I didn't say Michelle's name one time. You have been the voice for her I all year, Aiden. You've been the voice for her I all year. I didn't say this one so, time. No, he's done. He's, he's done. He's done. Then have no. Removed. Then have I removed. can't believe that you guys. Then have me removed. No, I'm not going to have you removed. Okay, Mr. Riddell did exit his vehicle as requested. As Mr. Riddell exited. The law enforcement officers in the back are cheering him on. Yeah, let's bash this guy who, you know what I mean, ha had a situation and a run in with the police like we all don't know somebody that has. But let's, let's defame him because we're not getting our way. Let's use bully tactics to you know push him to famous character slander his name and i'm not saying he was innocent or guilty but like come on people i know people that that have gotten into they've gotten you know in trouble with drinking and driving it's not uncommon it doesn't mean you have a problem and and, and nobody and he's just doing this for malicious purposes and you have people that are in positions of power in the back of the room cheering on Aiden Fogel, the Lorraine County snitch. BFS is with Stametti, but at the same thing has his own deal on the side. And the Lorraine County snitch is Michelle Hung's the biggest advocate who had been all year going up there and just, you know, you're this, you're that, you're that. And this is another example of of one of Michelle's minions, I'm about to play another one of Michelle's minions. You know, trying to change a narrative, trying to portray these people like they're they're bad people because of a con because of one contract that he rescinded because it was questionable to him to spend taxpayer do dollars on radios that the county's never in history purchased. And this behavior had gone, has, has been going on since. It's still going on today. Chaos coordinators. He exited his vehicle. He stumbled and required assistance of his vehicle to maintain a vertical position while walking to the rear of his vehicle. Once at the rear of Mr. Riddell's vehicle, I can't believe they're applauding. Call it, let's applaud the Okay, let's talk about what, what's really going on here today, okay? No, we're here to talk about the jail. Here we go. Number one, the jail and the issue with the garage and everything else started because we all know the jail was in rough shape. In April of 21, we ordered to have a jail actually reviewed. That was started in April. We received that consult that consultation back in They're cheering on the Lorraine County snitch. Fallon, you know, I could say a lot more because, you know, Aiden, you know I know. You know what I mean? I mean, I could I could list names on, you know, 
oozed out with you. Um, just because when I was going in high school, I was part of the uh, epidemic um, generation. Actually, I was probably the start of that, that epidemic. It started with the Oxys, and um, I, I've lost uh, a total of uh, close, very close friends, about 12, um, 18 total known that I graduated with. Not bad, not bad people, just drug addicts. A lot of them, you know, got hooked on Oxy because they had an injury from high school or something and were prescribed Oxys and the, just the projector. You also know a lot of people that have, have fought that fight over the years and have gotten sober and I'm, you know, very proud, but, uh, you know, Aiden was a part of a lot of that. We'll just say that. So the fact that Commissioner Michelle Hung is associating her all the sheriff's deputies and uh, the fire chief um, are so all the sheriff's deputies. Uh, uh, Shaw, sorry, I apologize. I don't want to loop everybody in with a couple, you know, bad apples, but, and I support safety forces, but, you know, Adam Shaw, um, who works for Phil Stamatis and the uh, president of the Deputies Association, is, is you know, um, advocating with Aiden Fogel. Uh, it, it, is something stinks to high heaven with this situation. And Aiden wasn't the only victim. There was another victim. Um, Jeff Dredell's administrative assistant, John Gall, uh, he was, uh, I posted last night. Let's actually, I want to go through this real quick. Let me share so you guys can see. Do, 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 do. Uh, I'll go to my Facebook. We are going to go here. Back in December, Lorraine oh. County reporter oh. Michael oh. Duran. Okay. So, what I'm showing you here, let me see if I can. What I'm showing you here. I'm going to put this side by side. Okay. So what I'm showing you here is December 23rd, a few months after this, um, actually right before the new radio, uh, new Bobby and Tele sorry, I can't say radio, Bobby and Telecommunication System was uh, being um, negotiated. Our Lorraine County recorder, Mike Duran, decided to play uh, petty games with administrator john gall and i said yesterday it was his parking spot and i messed that up this parking spot was to uh a previous administrator i can't actually i wrote down the notes so i don't forget this i want to pull it up real quick and this is uh county commissioner for dell's new administrative assistant john gall who was michelle hung's previous administrative assistant he left Michelle, um, when all of this uh, nonsense started happening, um, and she started, you know, attacking people in the in, in the county and uh, in the office, and he did not want to uh, be associated with Michelle anymore. But the parking spot was um, not his, uh, Fetterman's or Durant's, the Lorraine County Recorders, or his assistant spot. Um, many years ago, uh, Judy Nedwick uh, had two spots, one for the recorder and one for the deputy recorder. She asked for a special spot for an office friend, and the spot was labeled assistant deputy recorder. Um, throughout 2023, the parking spot was used by Matt Spears, um, and at times, Mike Fetterman uh, or Mike Duran, county recorder's wife, Christine Duran, when she did the administrative building. Um, and that was uh, in court documents. She testified to that. Um, and it was in court documents because they tried to, you know, get a, a restraining order on John um, after this incident, and I just want to go through the footage real quick without the sound. I want you guys to see it, to see, I'm going to tell you my opinion here, what they did. So you see, this is right here, this gold car is John Gall's car, administrative assistant to Commissioner Jeff Riddell. Um, Mike Duran, recorder, Mike Fetterman is his, uh, his first legal name. 
um he is and his wife christina are very good friends with county commissioner i mean very good friends county commissioner michelle hung he was also part of the lorraine county Republicans of lorraine county when i joined um he was one of the main facilitators to use lorraine county young republicans name to attack uh jeff riddell and Dave Moore in the name of like another Republican organization to make them look bad for credibility. Um, and I found that quickly. So he has, uh, he was going after um, Michelle's enemies on behalf of Michelle. She's a pattern of, you know, having people, you know, do her dirt. Here he walks up and he sees this is here. Um, so works um, in the county but what's funny is these two jeff bayer and mike duran ran against each other jeff as a democrat mike as a republican um in the primary for lorraine county recorder uh and they're they're fast friends and i just find that interesting um that jeff bayer here is gonna help mike so you see mike pull up okay shortly afterwards we're, we're gonna see Jeff walk out. Oh, come on. So he calls his friend. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So I just want to fast forward so I don't take too long on this. But it's just another form of, you know, retaliation against other people associated with the missioners. So here you see Jeff. Here's Jeff Bear. Here's my man running against your back. I, about a month ago, best friends before then too. I think they, they colluded there and said, "You run as a Democrat, I run as a Republican. Either of us win." You know what I mean? Yeah, not a good look. So they leave, right? And look at the time, nine eighteen, right? They leave. They pull up. Nobody's in that spot. Nobody's in that spot. Now, uh -huh. the pulls in. Hold on, let me show it. Okay, he pulls in. This is Mike Duran. This is Christine in Duran's car. He pulls in, right? Just he pulls in. He pulls in pretty close, right? But, you know, not close enough. He has to hold on. Oh, no, get closer. So he pulls out. And he pulls back in. And look how freaking close he gets to that car. So what he ultimately did is he ultimately blocked... Uh, Mike in, I mean, John Gall into his car. He couldn't, you know, get out of it. And look at it, three times, not once, not twice, but three times he pulls in and out to get as close as possible as he possibly can. Okay. This is what? 920, here. Okay, and look, here's just another view. So he pulls out, pulls in, gets out, takes a picture, walks back to work. And there's a picture here I want to show you. Oh, okay, so he doesn't have a key fob thing. So he cannot get into his car. And the way to get the he can't even squeeze in to get it. Look how close that is. I mean, any of us would be absolutely pissed. Look. Now, Lorraine County Dumpster Fire, they reported this incident as, um, you know, kind of made John Gall, like, you know, just this weirdo that follows people home and, you know, um, uh, scared Christina Duran. And Mike Duran didn't even show up to court with his wife. What came and had to, like, try to defend her, her need for this protection order without her husband even there. Now... This is what's interesting to me. Is this is something the Chronicle Talk never showed, and you know, this is why they're so bad journalists. Okay. okay, so I want you to watch Jessica. You ready? Now watch. She's gonna do what I call the two step. Two step. When you're like a little buzz and you're like two stepping. Him and Christina do. They both can't walk in a straight line. I find it very, very funny. But watch the two step. Now watch, she gets out. Now watch her. He 
He looks normal there somewhat. I know he does it though. Now she does it. One, two, two steps. See that two step, two steps. She's a little buzz. And why is he backing out her car? It's because she's a little a little apprehensive. I mean, I mean you can't really hit somebody's car if you go straight back, but if you're a little buzz, you might. And look at her. I mean, she walked out and she did that little two step, walked out to the side. Here, let's watch it again real quick. I like it. Watch Christina get out. All right. Watch her right here. She's going to do the two step right here. Two step. This is Aiden's friend. Aiden's talking about, you know, people drunk driving. I think they're a little buzzed. Now, when she walks, she walks at an angle. Look at the angle. She can't walk. It's not straight. She walks in at an angle. Of course, you know, they got to text people, take their pictures. So he pulls out for her. He's really close to her, by the way. Look how close. Look at her set up. She's two stepped again. Two step. You want to two step? Do you want to two step? <laughs> so then bullshit and bullshit and bullshit and bullshitting, bullshit, bullshitting. Oh, look at it. You realize the sign is gone. So now we gotta, you know, take pictures and have fun with that, which we're gonna do. Come on. So here, you know, look, he's taking a picture. Got some tallest friends. Got to show it to Eden. Got to show everybody. John got upset by blocking us in for, and look at the time right now. It's 8.36 at night. They blocked him in for almost 12 hours. He could not get into his car. So then he gets into his car and he goes first. You should probably be following her. Oh no, I gotta get out again because something's so funny. He runs. Look at the way he's walking. I think they're buzzed. And when he called the police, what's great is when he called the cops, he said, How do I, how do I, it's the way he said it. He's like, How do I file a report? I don't know. Look at that. And then watch him drive off. Ooh, see that? Talking about driving, Aiden. Watch. There's the two step. Now he's in front of his wife. Now watch her drive off, though. She doesn't stay with the line, which I find so interesting. Anyways, when a real video, when she drives through, she drives up like this, and she goes over there, and then she. You saw that two step in that Christine doing here? Yeah. Okay, so this part about I have to play it. This I gotta unmute. I gotta real quick so I don't know. Give me two seconds. No, he, it's still on. I was like, what's going on? Because his car blocked us in. And then I, uh, I, I I stuck my hand in there to try and, like, tell him to leave. Sir. John Gall, administrative assistant to Commissioner um, Jeff Riddell, claimed that Mike Duran had punched him in the face when he called police. And if you go to, back to my Facebook, you can watch the whole thing. The 911 call is playing during that video, which is why I muted it. But it sounds like the recorder, Mike Duran, um, previously known as Mike Betterman, let's be changed his name and changed his name for a reason, um, just admitted, I believe, that he stuck his who sticks her hand through to get a point across through somebody's car window? Sounds like he just kind of accidentally admitted to assault. Um, because John had claimed that about 30 minutes prior, and actually when they answered the call, they asked him if he was in the station because John Gall was in the station and didn't press charges, by the way. You know, he could have absolutely pressed charges against the county recorder and, you know, made 
his life a little more difficult but you know it was like you know we just you know got into an altercation and I just wanted to make it um known I don't want to you know ruin his kids he has family I don't want to you know take it further I just want this reported so as the victim he didn't press charges and he could have he could have easily and um you know uh if I was anybody I'd look into Fetterman's uh past because maybe he has a uh, history of uh, aggressive acts. We'll just say that. You know? The more you know. Let's talk about Jeff now, though. Let's get off these negative Nancys. I want you, as Lorain County voters, um, people that are interested in Lorain County, um, to really get to know why Commissioner Jeff Riddell ran. Um, what you've been seeing in the papers the last two years, what you've been seeing online, um, from you know the the fan club is nothing but hate and i found an interview um with jeff uh an even like interview and i'll i'll tag uh, the full interview here um and he talks about his beliefs and why he's running and i i just really thought it was a good insight into who he is um because i don't really even know I, I don't know him that well i just have watched you know all the commissioners meetings and just kind of stayed up to date um but i think us as voters we should we should watch and discuss because it's very relevant to what's going on now and it'll be even more relevant tomorrow when we start going through 23 and 24 and what happened with the radio situation after the contract was rescinded you need to know um you know somebody's character when somebody's character is portrayed in the media the news the uh, uh uh newspaper as uh being you know uh some you know guy that just is you know out drinking and not giving a crap and this and that i mean they really they did a number on them and the way that they you know accuse people of you know being worse or being bad or you know just because of a couple of acts that they've done in their life it just negates like everything that they've worked for and you know that's why this is it's important to you know get to know dave more and that's why it's important to get you know that's why i did an interview with him it's important here to you know show who jeff is before we get into the ugliness because it's really easy to villainize somebody um based on you know rumor hearsay and such and you know, jeff makes a, a a great point to that is you know he says when people vote they vote um, by, you know, what other people say about you. It's not always, uh, um, you know, real information. So, like, you know, your reputation matters, especially in, in county politics. It's a very small, um, big, but small world. Very small world. So, let me, um, Hold on one second. I gotta pause this. My son just came out. My daughter's supposed to be babysitting. Hold on two seconds. My husband's working, so give me a second. My daughter does not do what I tell her to do and he lets the door open Christopher close the door he just said he can't do it hold on my son's autistic he's just, he's just Oh, children. My 16 year old's like, ow, ow, ow. And my husband's been working since 2 a.m. He's a workaholic. That's all he does. And he works all the time. But let's get back into this. Who is Jeff Riddell? Let's do the first interview I want to show you is one. How did you decide that you wanted? to run for oh that's not the one 
you decide you wanted to run for county commissioner? And why did he want to run? Uh, here we go. System on. Share. How did you read commissioner? Well, well it, it, it actually wasn't a very complicated decision. Uh, been involved in trying to bring competition, political competition to Lorain County for quite a while. I've been involved in things because I believe that government, when people have to compete to get their job, run for election, I think it tends to create better government. And when okay. you look at some of the communities in Ohio that are doing the best, they're the ones that are 55, 45, or, or they're, you know, 42, 48, where, where the two political parties have some balance and they can't be dictatorial, they can't, they can't be autocratic, they have, to, they have to make sure that what they're doing is good for everybody, they can't just do whatever they want. And I think that the, the thing that struck me about running for commissioner was that back in 2020 we elected two new commissioners because people said they want to change and this year uh, policies and his his belief structure may not be in tune with people today and they wanted to change well then you know let's remove the third one because we've we've kind of reverted back to the same policies and stuff that we had for the last 70 years and I think people want to. I think people want that to be updated and get more current. Uh, what uh, characteristic? I like it. You guys like it, and I like what he said. He said, you know, in 2020 we were going to have a change. What does he mean by that? Well, in 2020, two Republicans for the first time in decades were elected to the board. And it wasn't until this CCI contract that Michelle Hung jumped ship um, and abandoned her Republican counterpart. And everything just reverted back to the way Lorraine County did business. There was an opportunity for change and change didn't happen because of this Cleveland Communications nonsense. She then aligned with the Democrat, Matt Lundy, and decided to, you know, do what the Democrats did. She befriended them. I can't, I mean, I like the answer. Learning kind of wanted to change. They voted in and she basically went, you know, Nothing got done. It halted progress. What does that do for the voters? Now, what was uh, Commissioner Riddell's experience? What did he bring? that i don't know as to quality but it seemed like she was doing a good job and uh brought experience to the position and was trying to implement some changes and when those hold on yeah that's right changes became politically annoying then then she was uh, she was given a difficult time at work, and eventually she left the county in a very bitter way. And oh no, I messed up. This is bringing experience, not his experience. I grabbed the wrong video. Hold on, we're gonna play that one. But I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, let's see. I couldn't upload these to my thing because they're too many megabytes. Qualifications. Here we go. Sorry, I picked the wrong one. Or play that one next because that goes into once again retaliation on About Mr. Hunt's part. Thirty-six years. 
and uh, things to own your own little family business, or in my case, I manage it for the family. I'm not the sole owner. But the buck stops at my desk. I can't pawn it off on anybody. I can't push it down the road, deal with it. And I think that the ability to not be afraid of a problem, to not think that it's too big to be handled, and to, and to bring people into the solution and solved has been with the help of some of the customers and some of the employees. So bringing a collaboration to the table, you have to do everything. You have to I love that. You don't. And, you know, that's, you know, as somebody that worked in a small family business, it was, you know, my aunt, my uncle, and I in the main office. Um, my uncle taught me literally everything I know about business. I am so grateful for his um, his guidance. Um, I'm grateful that he made me answer phones and work my way up. Um, really get to know the business and and like Jeff said, that's how you that's how you learn. Um, you learn by pulling resources from other places, getting people that know better than you. Um, uh, like you said, collaboration, um, management. And at the time, another and this is my this is you know we're going to number three. Another person that was affected by Commissioner Hung and her friends was uh, a woman named Jen Sinatra. She was the HR director. Um, I haven't brought her up yet because I wanted to wait till today, but Jen Sinatra wanted to implement some uh, changes to the HR department, um, the way they did it. They wanted to update healthcare, um, that'd be good for the employees, and she ran into a dead halt with uh you know the uh she came into problems with the Lorraine County auditor snodgrass and uh, michelle was nasty to her even though michelle was originally friends with her but when you know um michelle wasn't benefiting she throws people away that's exactly uh what she did um and then tried to also you know put negative comments and um her file and i'm going to show you i'm going to wait to that but let's see what jeff says about the situation first sorry jeff commissioner riddell A very, uh, 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 I, I don't know as to quality, but seemed like she was a job and uh, brought experience to the position and was trying to implement some changes. And when those changes became politically, uh, she was given a difficult time at work and eventually she left the county in a very bitter way and, a, and with a very uh, um, critical exit exit interview and uh, that you know, we were doing a lot of micromanaging and those kinds of things so i think what we need out of the hr department is we need to learn how to avoid when we sign a contract it's a contract we need to manage people according to the law we need to do reviews we need to do step uh, and i come from a world where we had uh, 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 civil service both in lorraine where i grew up and here in avon lake we have civil service service and the, and oddly enough one of the few entities that doesn't have civil service is county government okay all the jobs are appointed or given away they're not really earned we've got great employees they do a good job but there should be some process in order to, again to transparency if three people want a job and there's only one job then the three should compete for it they should test and uh, interview for it and they should be selected in their merits okay meritocracy think, so if they I think properly staffed and running would do that the much bigger issue is the budget
So, Jen Sinatra, let's see what happened there, you guys. So, I'm going to pull up I Records requested her file to see what happened. And where's my Adobe? Where's my Adobe? Come on. I'm going to do the whole thing. Okay. Don't show the audio though. All right, Jensen Natra, she was hired, so you can see me too, we'll do this. Jensen Natra, she was hired by the Lorraine County Commissioners as the Human Resources Director. On August 1st, 2021, she wrote her resignation. Dear JR, please accept this resignation for my position as Human Resources Director under my appointing authority, Lorraine County Board of Commissioners. Here is when she was hired. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Hold on. I don't want to do all that there's private information there. I went down too far. Okay, so 526, so May 26 of 2023. Please accept this letter of verification as employed. One, four, two, one year, seven months of service with our agency. And she wishes to transfer over 420 hours, agency six times. Let's see, there's a ton of balance zero. All right, what am I looking for? Hold on. All right, exit interview. Here we go. This is the exit interview Jeffrey Dell just mentioned. On August 1st, 2022, I resigned from my position as the Human Resources Director under the Warren County Board of Commissioners Office. This exit interview is good feedback on my employment in the hopes that the information contained will be seen as it's intended. Actually, I'm going to explain this so you can read it. So you can read it if my screen is up there we go um here we go this understanding of fully functioning HR department has existed in more than 20 years under the purview of Lorraine County Commissioners and I was and so I was hired to build a team and bring all the HR functions together into one cohesive department so that processes were streamlined and compliant. Failure to do so could lead to legal issues, poor morale, confusion, chaos, etc. I was excited for this role. Employees were excited to have a fully functioning HR department too. My first year plan was aggressive. In addition to streamlining all things related to the life cycle of the employee and the true overall assessment of all things of HR, I also started tackling projects. The first project was review the employee health care benefits. I'm going to skip all that. To begin understanding the healthcare plan, I spent a few months reviewing documents with representatives from various insurance groups and the broker for which the county engages services. Once the review was final, I put a PowerPoint document together outlining the existing plan and highlighting the advantages to the proposed plan. There were several meetings in executive session and outside executive session, telephone calls, and answering emails with the commissioners to explain in detail and make recommendations that would not have a disruption to the population. The idea was to push out a plan that didn't negatively affect someone's provider, prescription, or other existing medical needs, care, and or facility. In fact, the employees wouldn't notice any changes except that it would actually more services were covered. I had my HR team put together a calendar for each group we were to engage with to explain the changes for a very interactive open enrollment. Everything from the schedule to the agenda, the venue, and the presenters were planned out and were ready to go. All of this work and all of the changes in enriching the plan would have immediate estimated conservative things to Lorraine County of well over a million dollars per year. Additional projected savings of about another million dollars would be realized over the course of the first few years due to the implementation of an improvement of many wellness initiatives. None of these changes would cost the employees any money, and they would much, 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 much improve services. Commissioner Moore understood the proposal was 100% on board with making the critical changes. Commissioner Hung and Lundy, team, team, Commissioner Hung and Lundy stuck together and said no without explanation. I went back earlier this summer to try yet again to discuss the needed changes, hoping they would agree to push out the improvements plans for year 2023, but I was told flat out not interested. Hung and Lundy wouldn't even agree to one meeting with me. This is the Human Resources Director. The county's broker and the county's actuary, so she wouldn't meet with the Human Resources Director, the county's broker, or the county's actuary, 
necessary to hear about this proposal again. The people who are elected to have fiduciary responsibility the employees and the taxpayers. This ignorance and mismanagement of health care insurance misuse funds, just like misuse of ARPA funds. Another you see the pattern here. Another important measure I recommend early in my first year was to conduct a dependent eligibility audit. This is normal protocol that most organizations do, private sector, public sector, nonprofit, doesn't matter, to ensure that people on the plan should be on the plan. It's responsible management to ensure there's no fraud. But again, commissioners Hung and Lundy decided to pull the project off the table and never revisit it again. No discussion on this either. As an HR director, I look at the culture of the work environment, enhancing employee engagement, recruiting retention, and work life balance. The culture and fairness of most everything evaded Hung and Lundy. They hijacked recruiting from the HR department, supported raises to certain staff members, but not to others, and then applied the pre employment drug test consistently. My favoritism of the two commissioners didn't promote a healthy, oh, sorry, the favoritism, I said my, the favoritism of the two commissioners didn't promote a healthy culture, it divided the staff. Several employees came to me asking if they still had a job after board meetings. It seemed several people were regularly on the hung and Lundy chopping about the cause or merit. Any reasonable person in my situation would feel compelled to leave under the hostile environment perpetuated by hung and Lundy. The agenda was and flagrant. Fortunately, the things I was successful in accomplishing, the value reviewing, and putting forth the recommended changes, even if they were ignored, are what I'll take along. I'll take with me along with the wonderful employee vendors and consultants I had in the pleasure to know while working for Rain County. There is no value in detailing the hostility and interference I encountered every day in this exit. That information, along with the potential corruption by Hong, is all noted in the report from the Ohio State Auditor's criminal investigation team who requested to interview me recently. Now, this is on August 19th of 2022. So, here's a letter that, you know, she wrote, and I'm going to be posting all this, but August 17th to, you know, JR about. Um, Lorraine County Auditor, um, uh, Snodgrass, I forget how it's my first name, about, you know, the benefits. Does JR pursue to recovery as well as several previous conversations? Please note the serious concerns this department has about the auditor's department as we attempt to work together to put programs in place that will better assist employees and streamline the administration of countywide benefits. I'm approximately eight months into the project with calls between ADP and HR department and the auditor's department occurring every single Tuesday, a labor intensive worksheets and gathering information occurring regularly. We department will now conclude the project should be discontinued. We recognize and have now been told by the auditor's staff that they would like full access to the benefit system. Our carriers, Medical Mutual, Delta Dental, Lixar X, and Anthem Vision. This absolutely is their attempt to usurp authority from this department and the Board of Commissioners and goes against ORC and the resolutions of this county. In addition, as mentioned numerous times previously, it has been demonstrated repeatedly throughout these eight months that the auditor staff has no interest in working with us. Limits and controls are access to employee information. It is often challenging and rude to work with and is now attempting to manage our benefits program. At the end of the day, we need to have an electronic system that we can manage. I'm respectfully requesting we back out of this ADP HCM module and look up a standalone system that we own and manage. I fully recognize the Board of Commissioners will have to pay ADP for the eight months of support to build the system. Another reason why it's unimaginable, we, the BOC, Board of Commissioners, has no say in the process. But even if we hear quotation marks, our staff will grant us access it will, in our whole opinions be disingenuous and temporary i speak for us all of us but as always but as always and has occurred in the past if you'd like to speak with any of the staff in the hr department of course i welcome it as they do we are burned out and do not feel support which is greatly impacting morale i am respecting respectfully requesting we pause this project at this point 
and I look forward to your response. So they were trying to make changes and I should probably read this. Okay, so the the benefits are under the county commissioners and it seemed that Snodgrass over in Canada did not want to um, change. He didn't want to to move forward and, you know, um, audit the health care system for some reason and, and really made um, her life, Sinatra's life hell. And she just quit. And she she said, we're burned out. And, you know, Jeff just said, you know, we should be taking care of our employees. They, you know, our, like, you know, what he says in this interview, your customers um, come second. Our, our our um sorry our cus our employees how did he say it I'm not gonna quote it right now but anyways he basically how important your employees are for your business I mean you can you can find customers with your employee your employees and your customers are equal value so you don't have a business that you don't have somebody to work at um you don't have a business that you don't have somebody that will buy your product so. I don't know who this is from. No, you're saying you're not sure to know the auditor. I'm still learning the mechanics how. Despite the board taking action, however, the auditor is not notified of the change. There was a notification for payroll, a notice should send. Though I understand I did not instruct you to notify the auditor, I'm still learning the mechanics of how to effectuate such a change. I rely upon the auditors the doors to assist me in carrying out the board's instructions. Please assist me going forward. I have no idea what this is from, but they put it in her file. So then there's this typed memo about, like, an issue. So usually when you have an issue with somebody in, like, the office, like, you have the employee sign, you sign. There's usually, I've always had a witness in the room um, just to make sure like, you're covered. Um, but January 19th of 2022, a month before this letter to stop with uh, the Snodgrass stuff, uh, J.R. White, who is the administrative assistant, and then he went to the HR after the new board came in. Um, but I think right now he's the administrative assistant. He said, on Thursday, January 13, 22, I met Ms. Sinatra in my office. We discussed areas of improvement, especially the interpretation between the auditor's office and HR. She stated that she felt like she was going to be fired. And if so, she knew so much that would make Tom look like nothing. In the next sentence, she mentions talking to Dave O'Brien. Dave is a report for Lorraine County Telegram. And he never reported it. Uh, this is the second time Sinatra has threatened to be press if she's disciplined her fires. The first time she made this threat was in late October, early November, when I was discussing with her the commissioner's displeasure that I was not fully onboarded with according to policy. And then when I was discussing with her the commissioner's displeasure that I was not fully onboarded in accordance with, po with policy. I don't even know what that means. In addition, last week Sinatra informed me that Kurt Scholl had not been brought down to regular from the time he was replaced as the interim director, Jeff Young, current director, HR is responsible for advising the board and raise the sunset. So, and then he writes Jerry White. He doesn't sign it. She doesn't sign it. He puts this in her file. Now, this, this is interesting. Now, look, it says note 37, right? She's making a complaint about the auditor of February. And then 37, these notes appear. But what's really interesting, just Give me a second. Take received a phone call from the auditor, HR benefit module. Snagras claimed that Tony told the ADP meeting gone that Jen had ordered the product stop and have not updated she for benefits in two weeks. She she stopped the project. I met with Jen, and Tony, and Adina this afternoon regarding the situation. They denied can't read that word or not updating if advised and reinforce that whatever the truth they expected to move forward. So she canceled the project and she put gentle me in front of the staff. She is looking for a job. Uh, the blank called herself a scapegoat in front of the staff. I have asked her not to do that. So then she calls herself a scapegoat because she's getting blamed by Snodgrass for not updating the sheet when he hasn't been working with her at all. And instead 
like, you know, remain in a situation time, the auditor to stay in his lane and do what the board of commissioners had instructed the HR lady to do and to cooperate. They then punish Jen, who just is trying to do her job with unruly do. You know what I mean? Now, this is what I found interesting, though, is that look at what she did to this date. Weird. Is that an eight slash two? Eight. She resigned in August, and then he crossed it off three sixteen. So he made these notes for one month after this claim. And then Jen didn't sign this. Jr. signed this. Is it because of the letter, the exit that she, that she submitted? It changed date. I mean, look at this. You can't. It was the date that they wrote this. 8-2. She resigned on 8-1. It was written on 8-2. And the dumbass wrote 8-2. And then just tried to cross it off. Didn't like black it all the way. Just, just half ass. Look at 8-2. That's doctoring somebody's file. Somebody's human resources file. Which is ooh, good. And was a history of this. I had a meeting with Jen Satcharov to discuss the PM. In the meeting, Jen talked uh, of new projects, but expressed she wouldn't start them because she doesn't give a fuck anymore. She said she interviewed two times last week. Now, last week, this is 8 2, and this is on 3 16. This is a month after she sent the letter about Snodgrass. And then here's another one, another write up. And then he says he re he refused to she refused to sign, but here's the right of violation. This is qu fucking questionable. Group one on May twenty sixth. Okay, this is her write up for May twenty sixth in August. May twenty sixth, twenty one. The commissioner took action to change a something policy related to health benefit. You had been requested to change since March twenty one. After the meeting, I advised. Yeah, the board has an action. Date here of refused to sign on 8 1. The day she resigned, she refused to sign the write up that from May of 26, 21. Uh, yeah. Like, she resigned. You can't doctor files and put them in somebody's, somebody's file. Kicked me off my live real quick. Don't know why. My bad. Um, anybody that got kicked off, my internet went crazy. I can't remember this. Tour got kicked off, but yeah, I mean, that's how we treat employees. I mean, that's, that's no way to treat anyone. So, let's go back to Jeff, though. So, he said when he was running, he wanted to, you know. router too that's what drives me crazy all right are you gonna behave my back come on I'm gonna show okay that seemed to help a little bit, maybe. I don't know. I'm so happy I'm going to be so mad. Okay. So let me mute myself. In 
Lorain County. Well, the primary responsibility. Well, the, the way that we're structured, because we have so many elected offices, people people have a fallacy that they think the commissioners control everything. Okay. And they, the county recorder controls his own his own department. The prosecutor controls his department, and and so forth and so on. Uh, including the the what they do have is fiscal responsibility. The checks okay. and balances in the system are that the commissioners are responsible for the budgets to run all the departments and that they follow budget and they spend the money according to the budget and that what they're doing is legal and, and appropriate. So the commissioners have more budgetary control than they have visionary control. Okay. But as you learn real early in life, from your ball gold controls the game. So, so it is possible to steer departments in the right direction to deliver for Lorain County. It's just it's not a it's not a it's not a clear situation because the, the commissioners run it through the through the purse strings. I see. Uh, well, what's the best preparation for I mean, he really says it. He, the county is the purse strings. It's my son, he's standing in front of the router. That's why it's doing that. It drives me crazy. The purse strings. They, they're, they're, you know, really not supposed to be directing the the boards. What they're supposed to be doing is... Actually, maybe if I do this. Get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. go quicker oh look at it. it's helping okay there we go now it's boosting back up I gotta look at my Google thing today um what he's saying is you know we really don't we're not supposed to really control what these departments are doing we're supposed to hire the right people What we're supposed to do is it's not being ridiculous. Okay. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to manage um you know, department heads. They're supposed to come to us with, you know, requests that they need, they want, and they're we're supposed to be the authority um to make sure that they're spending their money responsibly. So the whole fact of Michelle hold on I gotta tell my daughter to get him to move because he's standing right in front of my router and every time he does it it's blocking my signal Uh, how can you make uh, uh, the government of uh, uh, Lorain County uh, more transparent? Well, it's one of my campaign pledges. I'm very disappointed. That there's, Rudy, there's a, there's, a, there's a lack of trust in, in government when people can't see it. Okay. And when they don't know what they're doing... And, and money's being spent, and they don't know why, and they don't know what for, and they don't know how we got to there. They, they, that's, I think that leads to where we're at today, which is people have a, they kind of have a no tax. They don't want to approve taxes, no new taxes, because they don't know what, what their elected officials are doing with the money they already have. And if you want my money because you got a better idea than me on what to do with it, you got to sell me on that. Yeah. You got to tell me that you're going to spend this dollar wisely. And so I think that when you talk about transparency, I think that we currently hold uh, uh, about a 
45 to 60 minute public meeting on Wednesday mornings. We don't hold them in the evenings when people can come. And we hold, by their own admission, I, you, you can't know what goes on in executive session because that's the whole, you know, that's protected by law. But when you have a three or four hour private meeting and decisions are made and the public can't see what went in. If they can't see what it went into the stew, they have a hard time thinking it's gonna taste good. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think when you talk about transparency, I, I've, I have pledged to do whatever it takes to get the budget uh, on the website so people can see that we're spending $2 million a year for this and a million for that and a half a million so they could get some comfort of what's happening because they work hard, they pay taxes, they wanna know right. what you're doing right. with the money. And I think that that was proven. Josh Mandel did that down in Columbus when he was the state treasurer. And he got a national award for transparency because you can't hide. If you gotta, put, if you gotta approve it and put it on the website, you can't hide from it two months later because it's on the website. And so I would add to that that when we write those checks and we say we're gonna spend $2 million for something, but. 100,000 of it is going to this entity, 200,000 is in this contract, 150,000 is a third. I think people should see where that money goes because I think people are smart enough to see if the money's being spent with friends of friends of friends or whether it's being spent truly in the public interest. Understand. So what he brought up at that point was Lorraine County Commissioners um, you know, we're holding executive sessions and, and nobody understood, you know, really what was going on. They didn't put out their budget. They didn't show you what their budget was. They um, just kind of threw numbers out there and people just kind of had to try to follow along with what, what he lived up to his campaign promise that, you know, um, he was going to be transparent. I think there's been three, four hours of executive session and he's put the bills up uh, online of his... Uh, um budgetary items at every meeting and they put it on the screen so that people can see they change meeting dates so people can attend they do one in the morning and they do two in the evening so if you can't make a morning you can make an evening they get more accessible so he did what he said he was going to do improve service to citizens uh, by the county government? Well, I think that goes back to the budget process. At the very root of the budget process is to ask the citizens what services are, are important to you and prioritize those services and then turn around and look, develop the plan to meet those needs. Uh, you know, it's, it's not as simple as just, are we going to, are we going to do a better job picking up the leaves? Are we going to do a better job with cleaning the ditches or are we going to, you know, chip and seal so many roads or asphalt so many roads or whatever, you know, the decisions are, they're more rudimentary than that. They are, we need to decide first what's most important and how many people does it benefit? Okay. And the things that benefit the most people the most should have the highest priority. We shouldn't have to have our communities competing that, you know, all the money goes to this place or that place and none of it goes somewhere else. I think, I think that people have lost touch with their county government because they don't see the fairness in the way things are done. And the way that you do that is go back to the budget process. You, you, you follow the, the college model and you bring in focus groups and you talk about what's important to farmers, what's important to suburbs, what's important in the cities. May well be three different things. I, you know, I've lived in all three. There, it's three different worlds. Yeah. And so when you get that list of needs, that's how you improve the services. Because you can improve you know, transit service for the people in Lorraine and Elyria but the people in the country won't see that because they don't, that's not a high priority for them. So we need to understand that everybody's got a, everybody's got a stake in the future. Everybody has to realize the other guy has a seat at the table. And if there's something important for the county and there's something important for the city, they need to get along and decide 
well, if it's important and it's important because the, the cities and the county, uh, the country and the suburbs, we're all neighbors. And if some of us are happy and some of us aren't, we're not where we need to be yet. Understand, uh, uh, what committees do you want to and for your future? I just want to be, I want to be known sometime as the best one-term commissioner Lorain <laughs> County ever had. <laughs> I don't intend, I don't, in, I, 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 I feel seriously about the, about the idea of representative government that whoever's sitting in government should have paid taxes, should have lived in the community that you're, that you're going to serve so you understand things and, and then if it makes sense to you, it'll probably make sense to a lot of other people. And so uh, my goal right now is to, uh, is, to, is to get elected in November, have a successful term, and, and hopefully convince somebody else from the private sector to step forward and, and, uh, and do the same thing. Okay. You don't see many career politicians at that level of life, of political life. But for some reason, we've, we've had a, when it seems like when you get the county government and above, we seem to have a preponderance of career political office holders. And, and so uh, at, at the end of the day, I think they lose touch with the changing world. And I, and I think they lose touch with the voters because they're, they, they're interested in getting 51% of the vote. I see. Maybe not doing what really needs to be done or not doing everything that needs to be done. Understand. So that. I think that that's the, I think the representative form of government is, is, is the reason, and that's the reason I'm doing it. I'm retiring from the family business, and I, I want to do this and, uh, and try and make uh, some permanent change so that my family and friends and neighbors and the others can enjoy what I've enjoyed. We, we've, we've had kind of a falling on hard times. You know, in Lorain County, we're part of the Rust Belt. As I told uh, my daughter who's taking over the business, you know, there's there's a little over 23,000 jobs that are not here in Lorain County that were here when I got here in uh -huh. 1974. Uh -huh. And that's, that's a big number. Yeah. yeah, That's a big number. So when you talk about opportunity, I, I think everybody should have the, the ability that their, their kids and their grandkids can, can live where they live and that they don't have to leave the area unless they want to, okay? to find work. They shouldn't have to leave home to find work. They should be able to find work here at home. Understand. You know, saying there, you know, when he was running, this is before he was elected, was, you know, you should be able to stay, you know, in this county. We need to build, you know, Lorraine County for the betterment of our citizens. And then he spent the last two years getting, you know, bashed in the paper, bashed in the meetings. And, and in through all of it, to be honest with you, through all of it, they still got got a lot done. I mean, they put up with a lot of nonsense, but they got stuff done. They got a new contract with Robbing Tele Telecommunications. They've been working on the Elyria Mall. They got uh, the transit done. Um, all while Michelle Hung and her, you know, cronies just worked on this, you know, CCI safety forces. I mean, she she tried to die on that hill and, and lost miserably. But I just wanted to give you a little context of who Fordell is. It, he, he's not talked much about in the newspapers. Um, I also wanted to give you context here of the retaliatory behavior of Michelle Hung and the people that have uh, been affected by it that, that didn't run for county office but are working in the county um that want to make changes to better um our future and all michelle did was put a uh, uh obstacles in the way and you know people hurled over them regardless so sorry about my uh children here a little bit there you know um my son can be a uh piece of work is an ear infection so he's not the uh, nicest person right now but i'm gonna get off of here you all enjoy your saturday um and i'll see you tomorrow night where we'll be going over the uh last half of my timeline and the sheriff's investigation um like i said i just wanted to do something like this morning um you know talk about 
John talk about John Sinatra and talk about Eden Fogel and what he's been doing and uh, talk about, you know, really who who Jeff Riddell is and that he doesn't want to be a politician. He literally just came in to do this as a, as a duty, he felt a duty and a service and he, you know, worked, uh, worked his uh, off to win by a hundred and 36 votes and you know your county commissioner is you know more important than the presidential election and and people don't vote on off presidential years and and that's what we need to start um changing your county government will affect you more in your lifetime than the federal and ultimately it's home rule your county is home rule your county controls your county i mean your your life think property taxes uh you know sales tax uh a ton of stuff i mean it's unlimited and you know the entire time that michelle was in office uh, she worried about a radio contract um and worried about you know um her goals and it seems that you know, Jeff and Dave have worked towards um, helping. I mean, new transit thing alone that you can go on app now. You don't have to wait, you know, two hours for a transit. You have your government dollars working for you. We have a plated mall that we invested money in to help the Port Authority. And 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 uh, we'll get a return on that investment. And all of us will stop looking at a mall that is, that is, that is torn down and abandoned. Um, and that's been a huge project. We uh, got they ended up going through the healthcare stuff and got a better healthcare program for their employees with more options for you know services. So a lot has been done in the interim that doesn't get reported about. And you know before you believe you know a, a news story in the media, you really got to ask yourself, you know. Does this really make sense? Does this, you know, do I know all the facts here? And and really not allow yourself sometimes, you know, to be pain, to be influenced by just because they're a newspaper. Because I'm telling you right now, you know, Chronicle should fire Dave O'Brien. He is he is by far one of the worst reporters they have. He 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 literally gets on the phone with all of these people and just creates narrative they want and like you know it's a popular contest and hopefully i'll be here to help you out a little bit with that but um tune in tomorrow uh i'll be posting um a time here shortly after talking to my husband because apparently my teachers suck at watching my son so um you guys uh stay focused Lorraine county and i'll see you tomorrow and we'll be going over the second half of the sheriff's investigation i hope you enjoyed getting to know commissioner uh jeff riddell and uh you know seeing you know a kind of retaliatory you know behavior on uh on, on commissioner, uh, michelle hung's uh you know war path we'll talk soon thanks for tuning in I don't think I've had anything extraordinary. Uh, obviously, in the in the political scene, we've had interaction with politicians. You know, being involved in conservative things uh, all the way back to high school. Uh, but the, I think that the my interaction with government has been about the same as everybody else's. As a citizen, I feel some of those fr same frustrations that people feel with government that's not quite responsive okay uh i think the uh and, and then i think as a business it mirrors the same thing because a business is an entity into itself as well it may be it may be 40 50 60 10 people whatever but the business has you know there's such a thing as a corporate citizen and it needs things from government you know it needs support from government that uh, that individuals don't but uh, I think the, the interaction with government is frustrating for many of us. Uh, I think that the whole last two years with the COVID is, has shown that because right. 
<coughs> excuse me, even though it was even though it was something we've not experienced for over a hundred years, uh, there was a lot of disagreement within government of what we should be doing and what right. we shouldn't be doing. Right. And and I think people have an expectation out of government to that somebody clearly sees what needs to be done. Okay. Uh, and no matter no matter what happens, everybody has an opinion about what the government should or shouldn't have done. What did they do well? What did they do bad? And I hope somebody distills that down and comes up with a plan for the next pandemic because I think shutting down the greatest culture, the greatest economy, the schools, and all that stuff, shutting it completely down for extended periods of time turned out to be counterproductive. And we were victims of our own fear. Big we, mistake, we didn't understand you know. it. We didn't understand it, so we, you know, and go back to go back to that famous speech after after Pearl Harbor, you know, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Well, we let we let ourselves be afraid of fear. <laughs> and I and I think that those two things, people 